Chapter 5 Unexpected Visitors Someone was pounding on Tommy's front door. He groaned, sinking deeper into the sagging couch that he was currently vegetating on. The staticky TV was on in front of him, playing another nature documentary about spiders that Tommy was very invested in. Tubbo's computer, which was almost always on and shining painful blue light into the room, had gone dark for once. The apartment was quiet, save for David Attenborough's tinny voice blaring out from the TV, and of course the knocking. This was one of the rare times where Tommy had the apartment to himself. After getting home from his shift at Puffy's, he'd found a note from Tubbo telling him that Ronbu had to work late, and Tubbo had gone to walk him home. Once again, Tommy was hit with that familiar ache in his chest, knowing that his best friends were off doing their own thing again. Still, it's not like there was much he could do about it now. So he had turned on a documentary on spiders that Tubbo had been adamant they couldn't watch because spiders were gross. Tommy didn't agree with that, because spiders could actually be pretty damn cute. Maybe he could get a pet spider one of these days. People kept tarantulas as pets, right? He could name it Shroud and put him in Tubbo's hair when he wasn't expecting it. More knocking. Oh, right. Tommy should get that. Turning down the volume on the TV, Tommy pushed to his feet and shuffled over to the door. If Ronbu and Tubbo both forgot their keys, Tommy was going to smack them both in the head. Not bothering to look through the peephole, Tommy swung open the door and was greeted by two people that were most certainly not Tubbo and Ronbu. What the fuck? Of all the people who could end up in front of his door, Tommy had to admit, the Blade and Zephyrus weren't high on his list. The Blade was every bit of a tank in person as he seemed on TV. His long pink hair was twisted into a complicated braid in the back of his head, a large boar skull covering most of his face save for his glowing crimson eyes. There was a small black band wrapped around his throat, similar to one he'd seen Siren wear before, and figured it was his voice changer. And of course, there was the golden crown that was always seated on top of the boar skull. The points of the crown spiked, and seeming as though they were razor-sharp to the touch. The blade didn't really catch Tommy's full attention, though. Instead, he immediately noticed the man who was leaning heavily on Blade's shoulder. Zephyrus. Zephyrus's huge black wings were drooping behind him, the glossy black feathers dragging along the ground. Light blonde hair was tied into a small ponytail at the back of his neck, but even through the veil that covered his face, Tommy could see more than half of his hair had come out of the hair tie. His dark green and black robes were stained with blood, and despite the veil being too dark for Tommy to make the details of his face out, he had a feeling the villain was grimacing. The Blade and Zephyrus were standing at his front door, and Zephyrus was injured. Again. What the fuck? Why are you here? Tommy finally managed to spit out, after staring at the two in shock for a solid minute. Siren told us you were a healer. Blade said simply, Oh, that bitch. You say the guy one time, and suddenly he's giving your address to every villain in the goddamn neighborhood. Tommy grumbled, scowling at the two. Now, Tommy wasn't stupid. As much as he wanted to slam the door shut in the villains' faces, he also knew that that was a horrible idea. Because even if Siren had been friendly with him and bought him McDonald's, somehow he had found out where Tommy lived and told the other two members of the syndicate. If Tommy refused to help Zephyrus, it wasn't going to give him a good name with the villains, even if he had saved Siren's life already. Great. This is exactly what he didn't want. I don't have a choice in this, do I? Tommy asked, raising an eyebrow at Blade. No, you don't, Blade answered. Well, at least they were honest. Letting out a deep sigh, Tommy nodded and opened the door wider. Bring him in and put him on the couch. Sorry about this. Zephyrus apologized as Blade helped him inside. We just happened to be in the area and I don't think I could make it back to a place like this. Yeah, yeah, I get it, Tommy muttered, shutting the door behind the supervillains once they were inside and locking it tightly. 
Blade helped Zephyrus onto the couch. Once sitting down, Zephyrus's wings spread out and almost knocked a lamp off the table. Tommy pinched the bridge of his nose, silently praying that Tubbo and Rombu didn't come home right now. With Zephyrus settled, Blade seemed a little lost about what to do. He hovered by the couch, looking between the man and Tommy, biting back a sharp retort that probably wasn't the best thing to say to someone people called the Blood God. Tommy instead cleared his throat to get both villains to look at him. Blade, you can sit on that chair over there, he said, pointing to Tubbo's computer chair. Are you sure I can't stay here? No, you'll be in my way, Tommy snapped. Blade stared at him for a moment, and Tommy's heart started to pick up as he wondered if he went too far. But then, after a beat, the Blade silently moved to sit in the chair. Okay. He had two supervillains in his apartment, and one of them was injured. Peachy. Exactly how he wanted to spend his Wednesday night. Taking a deep breath, Tommy walked over to the couch and kneeled down next to Zephyrus. He glanced up at the villain, straining to see his eyes behind the veil. While he could faintly make out an outline under the veil, he realized the villain was wearing a black mask over the lower half of his face under the veil as well. So basically, he couldn't see shit. Giving up on looking at his face, his eyes then fell to Zephyrus's hands, noticing the way the skin was tinted black on the tips of his fingers and how his nails curled out into razor-sharp talons. Okay, better not get near those. Zephyrus, I'm gonna need you to lift your shirt so I can see the damage. Tommy told him, glancing back up to the veil. Sure thing, thing, mate. The villain said, in a voice much friendlier than what Tommy had expected, although it was tight with pain. Making sure to keep his movements slow, Tommy reached for the green and black fabric covered in blood. Upon closer inspection, he realized that a lot of Zephyrus's shirt had blood on it, and it only took a glance at the staining pattern to realize that most of it wasn't his own. Tommy lifted the shirt away from the skin, moving the fabric up and trying not to wince at Zephyrus's pained gasp when the fabric pulled at his wound. Once he actually saw what had happened, though, Tommy breathed a sigh of relief. The wound wasn't anywhere near as bad as Sirens had been. It looked as though he'd been shot, with a clean hole going through his side. Tommy was just able to make out an exit wound on Zephyrus's back, meaning that the bullet wasn't still lodged in there. This was painful, yes, but it wasn't anything that Tommy couldn't fix. Some rando got a lucky shot on you? Tommy asked, narrowing his eyes at the wound to see if there was any debris stuck inside. Yeah, I don't think the dickhead was even aiming for me. Zephyrus said, with a low chuckle, making himself wince again when it jostled his wound. Looking closely at the wound, Tommy noticed a few pieces of green fabric stuck inside the hole. Back in the alley, it had been far too dark for Tommy to get a proper look at Siren's wound, and he wouldn't have had time to clean it before Siren bled out. If there had been any debris in Siren's wound, it wouldn't have killed him to have Tommy heal it anyway, but it probably wasn't great. Right now, Zephyrus clearly wasn't bleeding out, and he was sitting in Tommy's brightly lit apartment. He could take the time to clean it out. I need to get that debris out before I heal it. Let me grab the first aid kit. Tommy muttered, pushing to his feet to rush to the bathroom. The first aid kit hadn't been used since the boys had discovered Tommy's healing ability. None of their injuries since then had required cleaning, so the box had stayed tucked away in the far back corner under the bathroom sink, collecting dust. Pulling it out, Tommy coughed as the dust made his eyes water. Heading back into the living room, Tommy set the white box on the counter, clicking it open and digging inside for the pair of tweezers he knew they still had in there. Got it, he muttered, kneeling back down beside Zephyrus. This might hurt a bit, so fair warning for that. I can handle a little pain. Zephyrus shrugged, although Blade made a noise of complaint from the chair. Ignoring Blade, Tommy started trying to pull out the fabric as carefully as he could. He set up a small bowl on the coffee table, dropping the bloody fabric bits into it so they didn't have even more strange stains on the carpet. Sure, the couch was definitely going to be stained with blood after this, but Tommy could just lie and say he'd cut his finger while Tubbo and Rombu were out. It was strangely calming to work like this. 
Tommy's confused thoughts that had been racing in his head ever since he opened the front door started to slow down as his focus solely shifted to getting the fabric out of Zephyrus's bullet hole. So, so you're the, the kid, kid who saved Siren's, Siren's life? life? Zephyrus asked as Tommy pulled out another fabric piece, only wincing slightly at the pain. Yep, sure am, Tommy replied, leaning closer to the wound. Normally, he would have protested at being referred to as a kid, but he was so focused on not hurting Zephyrus that the thought didn't even cross his mind. Well, I wanted to say thank you for that. As I'm sure you can imagine, Blade and myself are pretty fond of Siren, and we'd rather keep him around. Zephyrus said, sounding completely genuine in his thanks. Behind him, Blade snorted. I don't know. Might be nice to get rid of him, so we don't have to hear his whining every time Dream beats him in a fight. Oh, shush. Zephyrus scolded, and Tommy frowned at how much it sounded like a father scolding his kid. He might be a shithead, but he's our shithead. Speak for yourself, old man. I have no claim over him. Blade shot back. Now you and I both know that's not true. Zephyrus said, turning to give Blade a flat stare. He's just as much of your problem as he is mine, and you're just as much of a problem to me as he is. Hey, now don't turn this around on me. I'm not the one who charm spoke his way into getting a free plane ticket to the Netherlands when he was 17 so that he could take out the Prime Minister, Blade argued. That's true. But you also hijacked a train when you were 16 and killed the conductor just because you wanted to know what a high-speed train chase was like. So I can't say you're any better. Zephyrus deadpanned. You're both chaotic shit who are the reason for 90% of my gray hairs. Tommy snorted as he pulled out the last piece of fabric and set the tweezers down in the bowl. Clearly, the group had all known each other for a while, given how Zephyrus was mentioning things Siren and Blade had done when they were teenagers. In the back of his mind, he wondered if they were related, but figured it was probably best not to ask that. All right, it's cleaned out so I can heal it, Tommy told Zephyrus. Zephyrus nodded, and Tommy placed his hands on the edges of the bullet hole. He carefully pushed the edges together, ignoring Zephyrus' sharp hiss of pain, and focused on the warmth building up in his hands. The warm energy tingled as it poured out from his hands and into the wound. He could feel the skin knitting itself back together, and there was a bright orange glow shining against his eyelids. In front of him, Zephyrus sighed in relief as the pain faded away. Tommy, meanwhile, frowned as his head began to pound again, though not as badly as it did with Siren. This time, he didn't try to hold out until the pounding in his head became too painful to bear. He didn't need to do that. The wound was completely closed up by the time Tommy pulled his hands away, leaving a fresh pink scar where it had been. God damn. Now that's impressive. Zephyrus commented, staring down at the new scar. Does healing usually take a lot of energy out of you? Tommy shrugged, a headache forming behind his eyes. It depends on how serious the injury is. Sirens nearly made me pass out because of how fucking big it was. Yours wasn't that bad. Definitely more tiring than healing a cut. But the bullet went straight through it, so it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Suddenly, there was a warm hand on his shoulder, and he glanced up to see that the blade had gotten out of his chair and was now standing over him. You all right, kid? I'm not a fucking kid. Tommy snapped, actually noticing the comment this time. However, the retort lacked its usual bite now that Tommy's energy had been sapped. And yeah, I'm fine. Just have a stupid headache. Zephyrus cocked his head while staring at Tommy, the motion eerily reminiscent of a bird. He considered Tommy for a moment, as if he was sizing him up, and Tommy tried not to squirm where he was still kneeling in front of the couch. Why did you heal Siren that night? Zephyrus asked after a moment. He told us he was unconscious when you found him. No one was around. No one would have known you could have helped but didn't. You could have called the police, or just left him there, but instead you helped him. You don't think I know that? Tommy scoffed, rolling his eyes. Of course I know I didn't have to. I even tried to talk myself out of it. But even if you guys are villains... That doesn't mean you automatically deserve to bleed out in an alleyway. 
I'm sure you guys all got families and shit like anyone else, and I know I'd feel terrible if someone I loved never came home one day and I had no clue why. Tommy tried not to wince as he thought of Tubbo and Ronbu. The idea of anything happening to either of them made Tommy's chest tighten to a near painful degree. He'd already seen bruises on his best friend's faces before. He'd already had to confront the terrifying possibility of losing them. The group home they all met in was a rough place, with a very strict hierarchy, but the injuries they got there was nothing compared to the time Rombu had gotten sick. It was only a few months after they had first moved out, and the place they lived in didn't even have running water half the time. Of course, one of them was going to get sick, and it ended up being Ronbu. Tommy's powers didn't help with viruses, and they couldn't afford to take Ronbu to the hospital. It had been a horrible week, with Tubbo and Tommy taking turns watching their friend at all times, checking his weak pulse and trying to get water down his throat as often as possible. The fever had eventually broken, but Tommy never forgot what it felt like to have to regularly check for his best friend's pulse, to know that one moment Tommy could look over and Rombu wouldn't be breathing anymore. They'd started an emergency fund after that, putting the little spare money they had from their paychecks into a separate savings account that they could dip into if any of them ever needed to go to the hospital again. It put an even worse strain on their already tight budget, but it was worth it. You're very empathetic, Tommy, Zephyrus commented, startling Tommy when he used his name. Most people wouldn't even consider the fact that villains have loved ones, too. Yeah, well... Tommy coughed to try and hide the way he flushed at the compliment. It's just called having basic human decency. Zephyrus laughed, and it sounded distorted through his voice changer. I suppose that's true. He brushed off his clothes, glancing around the living room, before nodding to Blade. I think it's time we get out of your hair now, though. Tommy huffed. Yeah, you should. You're lucky my roommates weren't here, or else this would have been really awkward to explain. You have roommates? Blade asked. Tommy nodded. Well, you should give us your number, then. If this happens again, we'll be able to call you in advance instead of just showing up at your door. If this happens again? Tommy questioned, narrowing his eyes at the villain. Zephyrus sighed. Look, Tommy, we're not going to force you to heal us if you don't want to. But now you have two favors owed to you from the Syndicate. And that's something people would kill for. You understand how helping us is beneficial to you, correct? Tommy scoffed. Of course I get that there are benefits, but it's not like I saved Siren because I wanted a favor out of him. And it's not like I helped you tonight because I wanted you to owe me another favor. I don't want anyone to owe me shit. I'm not involved in your world, and I don't want to get dragged into your problems. That's very understandable. Zephyrus nodded. You don't have to make any decisions right now. But just consider the possibility of working out an arrangement with us. We could promise protection. And money, as well, if that's what you're after. While Tommy scoffed again at his words, he had to admit the latter part of that piqued his interest. Money was always going to be a sore subject for him, Tubbo, and Ronbu, and the idea of having something to supplement what he already got from Puffy's, well, he wasn't going to cross it out yet. He knew it was a bad idea to get in business with the Syndicate. That was exactly the opposite of staying out of their world. But it was tempting nonetheless. I'll think about it. But I'm not making any promises, Tommy muttered. Great. Until then, do you think you could still give us your phone number? If there's an emergency, we're probably going to come here whether you've made a decision or not, Zephyrus told him. Of course. Typical fucking villains. Yeah, whatever. I better not be getting calls every fucking hour because one of you twisted your ankle or some shit. Tommy grumbled, grabbing a piece of paper off the counter and writing his number down on it. The blade took the paper and folded it into his pocket. Thanks. We owe you one for this. Bring me McDonald's one day and we'll call it even. Tommy muttered as he guided the two villains out the door. With one final wave goodbye, Tommy slammed the door behind Blade and Zephyrus as soon as they were out of his apartment. He made sure to lock the door behind him and huffed as he turned back to look at the state of his apartment. Well, the couch already looked like shit before, so the massive blood stain that was now present where Zephyrus had been sitting wasn't really that much of a tragedy. Tommy headed over to the coffee table, 
throwing out the bloody fabric pieces that he'd pulled out of Zephyrus's wound and put away the first aid kit back where he'd found it under the sink. As Tommy straightened up from where he'd been crouched to reach under the sink, he caught a glimpse of himself in the bathroom mirror and flinched. He hadn't noticed it before, but not only were his hands covered in Zephyrus's blood, but somehow he'd gotten bloody handprints all over his shirt as well. Lovely. That totally wasn't gross or anything. Figuring it would just be easiest to shower all the blood off, Tommy buried his shirt in the bottom of the laundry basket and gritted his teeth to mentally prepare himself for the icy water that awaited him. While he was grateful that they had running water a hundred percent of the time in this new place, which wasn't always a guarantee in their old one, that didn't mean it was good. It was always a 50-50 as to whether the water was going to be scalding hot or freezing cold. You'd either step out of the shower shivering violently or looking like you'd been sunburnt. There was no in-between. Tonight was a cold water night. Tommy made his shower as quick as possible, and his teeth wouldn't stop chattering as he changed into his clean, and decidedly non-bloody, clothes. After sitting on the floor of the bathroom for a few minutes to try and regain feeling in his toes, he eventually stood up to head back into the living room. Before he could open the door to the bathroom, though, he heard voices on the other side and froze. I'm just saying, I don't understand why we're still keeping it from him. Tommy sagged in relief when he recognized Ronbu's stupid American accent. Blade and Zephyrus hadn't decided to come back. It was just his roommates. Look, you said it yourself, it's better this way. Tubbo hissed in reply. And only then did Tommy realize that the two were talking about him. I said that in the beginning, but it's been a while now, Tubbo. Don't you think he deserves to know? Rambu asked, his voice just on the edge of pleading. Oh. They were talking about that thing Tubbo had mentioned before. I do think he deserves to know, but only when we know it's... Wait, did the shower turn off? Ah, shit. That was probably Tommy's cue to stop eavesdropping. Opening the door to the shower, Tommy didn't bother trying to hide the fact that he'd been listening to their conversation. What do I deserve to know? Tommy questioned, rubbing at his wet hair with a towel as he looked over his two best friends. Ronbu and Tubbo both seemed a little worse for wear than what Tommy had expected. Ronbu's normally pristine, black and white split hair was sticking up in random directions as if he'd been blasted by a weirdly strong gust of wind. Tubbo, on the other hand, looked tired, even the hair covering part of his face not being able to hide the bags under his eyes. They shared a look with one another. Ronbu stepped forward. Tommy, we need to tell you something. He paused, wringing his hands in front of him, while Tubbo's eyes widened. Ronbu took a shaky breath. We are getting married! Tubbo's voice cut in. Both Ronbu and Tommy's heads whipped over to Tubbo. What? what? The two shouted in unison. Tubbo shot Ronbu a dirty look and elbowed him in the side, hard. Ronbu grunted in pain and glared at Tubbo, but after a beat of silence between them, Ronbu sighed and nodded. Um, yeah. Ronbu started, pushing a hand through his hair. We're a getting married? What? This was the thing Tubbo didn't want to tell him about? That he was fucking marrying Ronbu of all people? It's for tax benefits, Tubbo quickly added, noticing Tommy's confusion. You know, married couples get tax breaks and shit, thought it would save us some money. Tommy blinked, looking between his two friends as he struggled to comprehend what he was hearing. They were getting married? to commit tax fraud. That was the secret that had been going on this whole time. What the fuck? You're committing marriage fraud without me? Tommy shouted, gaping at his two best friends. Well, legally, only two people can get married, you see. Tubbo started, holding his hands out in a placating gesture. And you're the youngest out of all of us, so Rambu and I are pretty close to being legal adults. So it's just easier for the two of us to be the married ones. Ronbu, who had a thousand-yard stare and seemed as though he was regretting all of his life choices, just nodded at Tubbo's words. Why the hell wouldn't you tell me this sooner? Tommy asked, his thoughts racing as he continued to try and wrap his head around the absolute bombshell that had been dropped. 
Now Tobo started to seem a bit lost for words. Um, well, we weren't sure if we were gonna go through with it, and we didn't want you to take it the wrong way. And, uh... Tubbo glanced around the apartment suddenly, as if he was trying to find a way to change the subject. His gaze fell on the couch, and his eyes widened. Oh, I was gonna ask. Why is there blood on the couch? Oh, shit. Tommy needed to explain that, without mentioning that two of the city's biggest supervillains had been sitting in their living room less than an hour before. Uh, I just, um, it was really stupid, but I cut my thumb, and I think it must have hit a big vein or some shit, because the thing bled like a motherfucker. Tommy explained, laughing awkwardly. I healed it pretty easily, but it kind of got blood on the couch, so sorry about that. That much blood from cutting your thumb? Rambu questioned, raising an eyebrow. Like I said, it hit something big, because that thing was just squirting blood. Okay, that's enough. Tubbo shouted. Cutting him off. Don't need that much detail, boss man. Phew. Going into detail was the perfect way to make his friends not want to push the issue further. He was so smart sometimes. Genius man in it. Anyway, I'm gonna go take a shower. Tubbo suddenly announced. Then I'm gonna go to sleep because I'm fucking tired. Rambu, we have the bed tonight, right? I think so. Rambu looked to Tommy for confirmation. Tommy nodded. Yep, I'm taking the couch. He kind of forgot that it was his turn to sleep on the couch when he was letting Zephyrus bleed all over it. Ew, that was kind of gross. He'd have to lay down a lot of towels to make sure it didn't get on him. Sounds good. I'll be right back, Tubbo told them, darting into the bedroom to grab a change of clothes before disappearing into the bathroom. Now alone with Ron Boo, Tommy glanced at the couch again and winced. Biting back a sigh, he pulled out a box from under the couch and took out an old towel they used as a rag. He laid it over the blood stain, hoping that would be enough for now. Then, he collapsed onto the couch itself, dragging his hands over his face and dropping his feet on the coffee table. From the other room, he heard the shower start up. Is your thumb okay now? Rambu asked as he sat down next to Tommy, glancing at his hand. Yep, totally fine. Tommy quickly said, dropping his hands from his face to hide them in his pockets. Healed it completely, not even a scar. That's good to hear, Rambu said, leaning back against the couch and dropping his head onto the cushion. There was a moment of silence between them, hanging in the air like a thick cloud. Rambu tapped his fingers against his thigh, while Tommy fiddled with his hoodie strings. So are you seriously going to marry Tubbo? Tommy asked after a minute. Ranbu sighed and let out a soft laugh. I guess I am. That's fucking weird, Tommy muttered, also laughing a bit at how ridiculous the situation sounded. He turned to Ranbu and grinned at him. But if Tobo breaks your heart, let me know and I'll beat him up for you. Tommy, it's not like that, it's for tax benefits. Oh, I know. I'm just saying. If he breaks your heart, I can kick his ass. Tommy pushed. Ranbu snorted. Considering Tubbo can pick both of us up if he wants to. I don't know how you plan on winning a fight against him. Nah, it'll be easy. I'll just bite him. Tommy smirked. Grimacing, Ronbu shook his head. Of course, I shouldn't have expected anything less. He fell silent for a moment, and Tommy debated turning the TV on when Ronbu made a confused noise. Glancing over, Tommy's heart skipped a beat when he saw Ronbu picking a black feather up from the ground. He frowned as he looked the feather over. Where did this come from? Rambu asked as he ran his fingers over the glossy surface. Oh, it must have come in from the window or something. Tommy answered, laughing awkwardly as his eyes darted around the floor for any more feathers. What kind of bird would have feathers this big? Well, Rambu had a point there. Zephyrus's feathers, like his wings, were massive. Beats me, mate, I don't know shit about birds. Tommy shrugged, twisting his hoodie strings around his fingers and pleading in his mind for Rambu not to push the issue further. Rambu opened his mouth as if to ask another question, but then the door to the bathroom opened, and Tommy thanked every god out there for the blessed timing. He hadn't even heard the shower turn off, but there was Tubbo, with dripping hair and clean pajamas on. You ready to go to bed, Rambu? Tubbo asked, leaning against the doorframe. 
With one last spared glance at the feather, Ronbu let it fall to the floor and nodded. Yeah, let me just get changed and I'll be right in. Sounds good? Tubbo nodded. Then he waved at Tommy. Do I need to wake you up for your shift tomorrow? Nah, I have the closing shift again. Tommy replied. Night, Tubbs. Night, Tommy. And with that, Tubbo disappeared into the bedroom, while Ronbu headed into the bathroom to change. Tommy pushed himself to his feet then, and set about preparing the couch to sleep on. He took out the blankets they kept under the couch and draped them over the itchy cushions, throwing an extra pillow on the armrest so his neck didn't ache in the morning. By the time he was finished, Ronbu had already followed Tubbo into the bedroom, the door shutting behind him. Now alone, Tommy shut off the lights in the living room and settled onto the couch bed, staring up at the ceiling as he thought over the evening. The syndicate knew where he lived, and now had his cell phone number. He'd healed Zephyrus. Ronbu and Tubbo had told him they were getting married, yet it still felt like they were hiding something from him. Tommy didn't regret saving Siren's life, but he couldn't help wondering how much easier his life would be if he hadn't come across the supervillain in that alley. In such a short time, Tommy's life was already spiraling out of his control. He hadn't wanted to get involved with all the super shit, and yet he couldn't help but feel like he was getting sucked into that orbit anyway. If Tommy was an astronaut, then Siren was a black hole. No matter what he did, Tommy was going to get sucked into his world. His only hope now was to try and keep Tubbo and Ronbu from getting sucked in with him. Why the hell did you tell him we're getting married? Ronbu whisper shouted to Tubbo as soon as the bedroom door was closed. You were going to tell him about Nuke and Enda and I panicked! Tubbo whisper shouted back, smacking Ronbu in the arm. I know you want to tell him, but we need to wait until we have more of an established presence in the man book. Both boys were sitting on top of the bed, glaring at each other in the dark. A beam of moonlight stretched across the bed from the window, outlining Tubbo's head and making his bleached hair practically glow. But why do we need to wait for that? Rambu asked, wringing his hands in his lap. I've told you before, Boo. Tommy's going to be worried off his ass about us when he finds out. But if we're already established vigilantes who have proven we can handle ourselves, he won't freak out as much. Tubbo explained, folding his arms across his chest. I think he's going to freak out no matter what. Rambu pointed out. Tubbo huffed. Probably. But I just want to wait a little longer. Yeah, well, now we have to get married because you want to keep waiting. Rambu muttered, rolling his eyes. Don't worry, we won't actually get married. Tubbo snorted. We can just tell Tommy that we tried and figured out it wouldn't work for some reason. Or that we changed our minds. No. Tubbo frowned, squinting to try and make out Rambu's expression in the gloom. What do you mean, no? I mean that I think we should actually get married. Rambu argued a slow grin spreading across his face. What the- Why, though? Because, Tubbo. Rambu leaned forward to rest his hands on Tubbo's shoulder. One, we could actually use a tax return. Two, you need to stop dragging me into your schemes without telling me ahead of time, so this is going to be how you learn that lies have consequences. And three, it would be really funny. Rambu was full-on smirking now and Tubbo worried that he had unlocked something feral in his best friend. Tubbo scoffed. You can't force me to marry you, dickhead. I mean, I can't. Rambu conceded. But I can tell Tommy that you broke my heart, and he'll be mad at you. What the- but we're not actually together, he knows that. He still threatened to beat you up if you broke my heart. Rambu explained, holding back a laugh. Tubbo narrowed his eyes. If you want to play it that way, then I'll just tell him that you're the one that broke up with me. You can do that, but which one of us do you think he's going to believe did the heartbreaking, you or me? Rambu asked, raising an eyebrow innocently at Tubbo. I have the backbone of a chocolate eclair, Tubbo. You seriously think he's going to believe that I broke up with you? But that's... Tubbo sputtered as he tried to argue against that, even though he knew it was true. That's so stupid, we're not even in a relationship. Do you want Tommy to be mad at you? Clenching his jaw, Tubbo glared at Rambu in the dark, both of them knowing what the answer to that was. 
That's what I thought. Rambu said after a beat, squeezing Tubbo's shoulders once before he let go. Now come on, fiancé, let's go to sleep. I fucking hate you. Tubbo grumbled, even though he was struggling not to laugh as he climbed under the covers. As he settled onto his pillow, a brilliant idea flashed in his mind, and he was glad Ronbu couldn't see his evil smirk when he was turned away. Night, Bo. Ronbu called out once they had both gotten comfortable. Night, hot stuff. Tubbo called back, pressing a hand over his mouth to hide his laughter. There was a beat of silence. Then, Ronbu groaned. I brought this upon myself, didn't I? You sure did, cutie. Can I take it back? I don't want to get married to you anymore. Nope. You committed, and I need to learn the consequences of my actions, remember? But there was another loud groan from Ronbu, and Tubbo fell asleep with a wide smile on his face. <laughs>